Greetings everyone and uh, happy Earth Week from here in South Africa. My name is Neil Butcher and I am part of an initiative called OER Africa, uh, which is facilitated by an NGO called SADI based in Johannesburg here in South Africa, but which operates across the continent. We are an organization that has, or an initiative that has spent the last 10 years or so trying to stimulate and promote the use of open educational resources or OERs in the African higher education sector. And we're doing that in partnership uh, both with a number of universities and also with key continental partners like the Association for African Universities and the African Librarians Association. From our perspective and from my personal perspective, uh, OERs is a really critical concept for African higher education in many different ways. Um, primarily because I think it introduces significant new opportunities for transforming the way in which we think about and deliver our higher education and, and other education uh, programs and, and courses uh, in Africa. I think it's very important to understand the, that the whole concept of OER shouldn't be confused with improving the quality of teaching and learning in African universities. Uh, I, Globally, there's been a tendency, I believe, to confuse those two matters. And while I think that uh, open educational resources can play a very significant role in facilitating improved quality, that depends very much on the way in which they are introduced into educational programs. Uh, so my, my biggest concern has been the, the mistaken view that OERs equates with good quality education. Uh, having said that, we see OERs as a powerful concept because it introduces very strongly the notion that learners should not be regarded just as passive recipients of knowledge, but rather should be uh, active participants in the learning process. The notion of resources that can be adapted and reused for different contexts provides significant opportunities for creating learning environments that offer those kinds of learning possibilities. Obviously, if we can also do that in ways in which those resources are being shared, uh, it's very important in the context of Africa because it provides opportunities for Africans to be seen uh, as producers of knowledge and not just consumers of content that's been produced elsewhere. Uh, so the concept of sharing educational resources openly and making them available for others to reuse and to adapt, for me, is a really critical way in which we can help uh, the world, first of all, and then Africans themselves to see the, the, the extent to which Africa is a place of knowledge creation. Um, and we can obviously do that in ways that are significantly more cost effective than were possible in the past because of the availability of digital technologies and uh, online sharing platforms and so on. Of course, in a complex linguistic context like Africa, if we start to share resources that have been produced uh, by and for Africans and that are relevant to our cultural, uh, economic um, and other contexts in the continent, then that also introduces the possibility for others uh, in different countries, in different parts of uh, the continent to be able to pick up, uh, adapt and translate those resources so that they are contextually relevant uh, and available in different languages across the continent. We have a tremendously linguistically diverse continent and the possibility that adaptation provides for translation of materials uh, is also a very significant opportunity. So, so we really do believe that OERs is a very powerful concept to support the creation of much higher quality, more cost effective, higher education environments uh, on the continent. And so what I, I wanted to do just to, uh, to illustrate what we think is some of the power and potential of the concept of OER was to take you through very quickly a, an example of what we think is a great success story. Uh, in OER, a, a project that we've been very fortunate to have been involved in. And, and that's connected to UNESCO's ICT Competence Framework for Teachers. Uh, some of you might be aware of the ICT Competence Framework for Teachers. Uh, it's a framework that's been created by UNESCO that are, uh, defines a number of key competences that teachers who are going to be using ICT in their classrooms, this is K-12 teachers, uh, would need to develop in order to be able to make effective use of technology in the classroom. Um, and 
if you look at the the the, the middle block here, you'll see that uh, we have we have an initiative that has actually been implemented in a range of different countries, um, as well as having created a community of experienced practitioners. But I thought what might be interesting to you is to see the journey of how that came to be. So. The origin of this project actually was not in Africa, it was in Guyana, which is a small country at the top of South America where the dot is on the map. And uh, I was involved in a project through the Commonwealth Secretariat to try to help uh, the Guyanese Ministry of Education to develop uh, professional development programs based on the ICT competence framework for teachers to start equipping teachers in that country with the skills that they would need to be able to use computers uh, in, in those days. And this was a few years ago, uh, predominantly desktop computers in classrooms. Obviously, the whole world of technology has transformed very radically since then uh, in terms of the kinds of devices we're using, but that was the basic principle. And so you can see here from what I'm saying that, uh, that we created a course that was actually in those days just partly paper-based and, and uh, built on DVDs. Uh, internet access was not great in Guyana at the time. Um, and we also had paper-based versions so that it could be facilitated entirely offline. So we created a, an initial course for use in Guyana and then we're fascinated to see how it transferred from there because we put all of those materials online uh, and a colleague from the UNESCO offices in Kenya got in touch with us and asked um, if it would be possible for them to adapt those resources to make use of them in a Kenyan context. Uh, and so that started a new project uh, in Kenya, which was in implemented uh, predominantly by the Kenyan Institute for Curriculum Development, where the materials that were de developed originally for Guyana were adapted, recontextualized, all of the policy environment of the Kenyan context was uh, infused into the new version of the uh, course and um, was then deployed on a fairly large scale in support of a tablet roll-up project that was taking place in Kenya. Um, and then from there, it really started uh, to, to take um, uh, flight, to get wings, if you like. So it, a version of that course was then redeveloped and adapted for the Rwandan context. Um, and from there, uh, another version went across to Djibouti. That was the first example of these course materials being adapted uh, through translation. So they were translated into French for that purpose. Then from there, uh, it moved across to Togo, um, which obviously is great because Togo also is a, a, a French speaking country. So we were able to use the adaptations in Djibouti, again, adapt them for the Kenyan, for the, the, the Togo context um, and, and deploy the course there. And we then from there went uh, to the next step which was that uh, in, with support from UNESCO and uh, ISKMI in the United States, we actually created the, through the, the OER Commons, uh, an ICT CFT hub uh, in the OER Commons platform. And this provided for the first time a, a web environment in which all of the different versions of the courses created to support uh, developing competences uh, for the ICT competence framework for teachers became accessible through a single common platform which obviously was part of a, a critical part of enabling us to build that community of practitioners. Uh, from there, we then went into what has become, I think, the, the single biggest implementation of uh, these courses, which is in South Africa, uh, my home country with, in the Gauteng province where I live, the Matthew Ganiwe School of Leadership and Governance actually found the Kenyan version of the course online and then got in contact with me and asked if they could adapt them. And that's led to a very large scale project where a version of the courses has been built up in Moodle and deployed to several thousand teachers in the Gauteng province to support um, their ICT skills acquisition. From there, a uh, version of the Rwandan course also um, was redeployed into uh, Zimbabwe in a sort of stripped, stripped down version. As you can see from the text here, this was actually a very different way of implementing it. It wasn't using a learning management system. We actually created an offline version of the course with, with our colleagues in Zimbabwe uh, that could be used uh, as a standalone version and also uh, deployed via the Google Play app. And also we went into Egypt from there, which obviously, uh, again, as you can imagine, meant translation into Arabic. Uh, and so as you can see, 
what started off actually as a very small seed investment from Guyana has 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 been built on multiple times um, in different contexts. So uh, again, we took materials from all of that, deployed in Mozambique with the Institute of Open and Distance Education. This again was another language translation example because uh, those courses were developed in Portuguese. Um, we went into Tunisia after that. Uh, and when I say we, I don't mean uh, me, Neil, and, and OER Africa, and my business, Neil Butcher Associates. Uh, this was done in partnership with a number of different organizations. Uh, you can see all of the names of them on the slides as I'm sharing them. Um, and then finally, what we, we, we went on to do is to create a generic version of that course that's been made available uh, via UNESCO uh, on the UNESCO ICT CFT hub that's within the OER Commons platform. And that's also become available for people to download and use. So this is just a, a little slide deck showing um, what's available in that, a number of units of courses. And, and every iteration of this has obviously required some cost it's taken some uh, of people's time and effort to be adapting those materials, translating them in certain instances. These are not things that happen for free. Uh, obviously, in some parts of the world, one relies very heavily on voluntary uh, labor. But in our case, we're, we're very keen to make sure that um, people are actually paid for the, the work that they do. So in all these instances, there were contracts and service providers in place, uh, contracted either through UNESCO or through the various partners to invest additional elements uh, in the process, but always adapting from this growing base of existing resources so that the, the investment requirements were steadily reducing with every iteration. We didn't have to start from scratch and the cost of deployment was relatively much, much lower than it would have been if we were starting from scratch. In addition, every iteration is able to build on the experiences and knowledge of what's come before it, which is again, a tremendously powerful model of implementation and I think really showcases the value of OER, which just in summary is we, when we've got a, a framework which provides the scope for courses, in this particular example, um, the great advantage is that the, the framework that we've used is a global one that's been defined by network, uh, sorry, been defined by UNESCO. Uh, we've then through that been able to develop a range of free quality adaptable resources in various languages. Uh, and to connect that to a network of experience in all of the different countries that I've just shown you to be able to implement courses that are actually being used by thousands of teachers across the continent and in other parts of the world as well. And so I think that this is a really excellent example that highlights the, the real uh, transformative potential of OER, both in terms of how it changes the way in which the course is implemented, because this is a much more interactive and engaging course, having built, been built initially out of openly licensed resources, so it focuses very much on hands-on activities and so on, but also really uh, emphasizing the transformative potential of being able to build on the knowledge that has gone with each successive iteration and to distribute that across multiple countries where we can get good collaboration. So for those of you who are interested, uh, the, the UNESCO ICT Competency Framework for Teachers is available at this link. And if you'd like to then go and view the various resources available on OER Commons, uh, that's the link that you can use to get there. And lastly, if you're interested in connecting up with the community, um, there is uh, an ICT CFT resource hub on OER Commons. Uh, the extent to which it's active depends from uh, time to time because it very much depends on what's happening within countries. Uh, very often uh, people get involved in their own local implementations and then this community dies down, but it is still there and something that's functional. And um, I think this example, I hope, really illustrates why we have such uh, a belief that OER, when it's well conceptualized and implemented, has tremendous potential to improve both the quality and accessibility and affordability of uh, post-secondary educational opportunities and indeed any educational opportunities, not only in Africa, but everywhere in the world. So it's been a privilege to be able to share these thoughts with you and we look forward to continuing to celebrate uh, Earth Week with you during the course of this next week. Thank you very much.